Hey everybody, call me Felix, and today on Lolito's Pinoy Kitchen, we will be cooking wild indigenous mushrooms. These mushrooms you can find in the Philippines, and I believe only in the Philippines, and it's only for about a one month window, in from about July to the start of August, just about. What I tend to call thunder and lightning mushrooms, much to my chagrin because I'm astrophobic. And dad says that they only grow because of... Uh, heat lightning or something like that. And we will be cooking these mushrooms in two different ways. One with mushroom adobo, and the second with dad's own special inabrao or dining ding. And to start us off, we're gonna go down to auntie's house where she will help cook the wild mushroom adobo. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Okay, got this special wild mushroom adobo. Only took 10 minutes to cook. So there's some soy sauce, there's some oyster sauce, there's some vinegar in here. And of course my favorite part is there's some ceiling labuyo in here. Add some nice spice. And of course we need a bed of rice. Let's give this a try. So dad is saying like these were high-end mushrooms for they only they cost like 500 pesos so that's like ten dollars for these mushrooms so let's see if they're on the level with like a morels or chanterelles mm. oh, really tasty it's a little woodsy but really gentle mushroom savory flavor what I get most is the garlic first, and then a bit of the heat from the chili. And some of that soy sauce. There we go. There's a little bit of chew to the mushroom, right in the stem, but very nice texture. Quite firm. Let's get that with that chili. It's lovely. Love that heat at the end. The ceiling of To me, it doesn't really taste like adobo in a way that it doesn't taste like vinegary. It just tastes rich. <coughs> it's up the mushroom and sauce. And you get more of the garlic and the heat. As far as like the umami taste goes, I would say it's got more of like a gentle meat woodsy taste, but nothing overpowering at all. It soaks up all the nice garlic and the chili very well. And of course, the soy sauce adds to the umami flavor. And yeah, you should eat a lot of rice with this. Got some more garlic, garlic clove in there too. Yep. Now you can hear all that thunder in the background as I was tasting that wild mushroom adobo and basically I could not go on and shoot and give you any more comments about it. 
Other than it's super delicious and one of my favorite versions of adobo, it almost tastes as if it was a uh, beef steak with onions, practically, with some chili. It's absolutely irresistible. Do, do try it at home. And now, it's time for Dad to take center stage. He will be cooking you his version of the ning ding with these wild mushrooms. Now you put the patula. So, to, uh, tell him what you did. So, we are boiling the saluyo or the jute leaves with the, um, the wild mushroom that we caught. And then you've added the patola and the squash blossom. And marungai. And marungai. Wow. It's a lot of vegetables to go with those mushrooms. You know, this is a very different preparation of the local wild indigenous mushrooms that are grown here in Ilocos. Now, I don't think it's just endemic to here. Dad cannot guarantee that these Santa Ana mushrooms are in, um, just endemic just to dig. Probably around the Philippines, right Dad? Or... Yeah. Okay. All over the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But dad, as a you know kid, just knew them mainly, or you know, all his life had known them as Santa Ana mushrooms here in uh, his hometown of Pidig. So um, that's why we called them here. Even though you can't really, you could probably find these in other, them in other parts of the Philippines. And so dad says, like local legend is, that these mushrooms. They only come out like around July. July is, we're at the end of July here as of this filming. And Dad says that the thunderstorms, especially when the lightning at night, that it just flickers on yeah. at night. They grow the... The heat, what you would call heat lightning. Yeah. Dad says it helps um, cultivate the mushroom or bring them out into maturity and such. Now, I can't tell you scientifically if that's true, but that's just what the local lore that Dad, you know, imparted to me, basically, about those mushrooms. And it's cooked. And it's cooked. So if you'd watch my recipe or Dad's recipe on um, Dining Deng or in a brawl, this is practically the same recipe. It only takes about... 10 to 15 minutes just to boil those vegetables. But the difference here, of course, is we've added more vegetables and, of course, the mushrooms. The mushrooms, and we have some patola, which is the, um, patola, what, it, what would, what's the word for it in other, um, in English? Or is it just patola? Yeah. So patola is like this bright green kind of, um, gourd that's, um, a little firm in texture. It has a little snap, but it's sweet. And then we have the marungai, which is the moringa leaves. Dad's one of Dad's favorite vegetables with the saluyot. So this is very leafy, very green sort of tasting. And this has the luxury of also of having squash blossoms, squash flowers, or calabasa flowers. Okay. And that's our finished dish. And it's really healthy. Yeah, aside from the fact that it's got a healthy dose of um, bagoong shrimp paste. And this is the finished in a brow with the wild mushroom. You can see a lot of greens in here. Patola, some marungai, marung moringa leaves, saluyot jute leaves. It's very healthy, and of course the squash blossoms. So we're ready to eat our dinner. Uh, Dad have, has made some pork adobo that we have left over from lunch. And because I can't really eat vegetables without some meat, that's the reason why it's there. Dad, yeah. of course, does like a neat trick, which is to take some of that mantika or the fat or the leftover oil from the adobo and then just and just put it on the rice with the vegetables so it lends i mean it's it's a cheater's way of eating vegetables but you know that's how that does it and it works and it's very and it tastes very buttery and such but i am going to try this by itself first just to 
here. So there's a nice healthy piece of mushroom with some squash blossom. I want more of the mushroom myself because that's the focal point of the dish, I think. Despite all the nice vegetables in here, that's what I'm more interested in eating. And I love patola from here. And then just mushroom soap. This is a very simple recipe. It just takes about 10, 15 minutes. The only thing is trying to source these ingredients, especially the wild mushroom, the rungai saluyo, squash blossoms. So this is, um, it all kind of depends on the availability. I think that's a very healthy bite there. Squash blossom, mushroom, saluyot, marungai. Let's get it going. Now these mushrooms, like I was saying in that mushroom adobo recipe, kind of has like a very um, understated or subtle, I'm not trying to say it's flavorless, but it has more of like a subtle woodsy flavor. And of course, the, like I said, the best mushrooms really just augment like, you know, the umami flavors but doesn't overtake everything else. And that's exactly what it is. And I really love, of course, is the patola, which is that um, green, pastel green, bright green color there, that gourd, because yeah. it's sweet. It's just like a juicy type of sweet in the same firmness. That's my favorite part. It pairs well with the other vegetables, which have more of an earthy, very green, healthy taste from the moringa leaves and the jute leaves. And I'll take another bite. And this is pretty healthy for you too. I mean, despite the fact that it has a bit of shrimp paste, you don't really need it if you don't want to. But it does blend a nice flavor and kind of binds everything else together. Let me take a bit of that wild mushroom. Again, quite subtle. Subtle woodsiness that doesn't take over, take everything, but it complements with the shrimp paste in lending more umami flavor, I think. And then, of course, these vegetables are very healthy. And, of course, with adobo, you're kind of offsetting that a bit, aren't you? So I dug at the bottom, matched my greens with my adobo, which are a little more of a fatty cut. So this is gonna be very satisfying if you need some meat. Um, this pairs well because I think these leaves here, the Murungai and the Suluyot, give like a rich sort of earthy, green, healthy tasting flavor. They're like collard greens, let's just say that. So for Amer my American viewers, I would say this kind of like has a similar taste profile to kale or collard greens. So if you're looking to pair meat with something healthy, this is the ticket. And this is how us Filipinos do it, especially here in the north, in the locos. So that's a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed both of these wild mushroom recipes. I wanted to feature some indigenous wild mushroom in, uh, mushrooms that are grown here in Ilocos. Uh, probably part, you know, I'm not saying that it's just endemic to Ilocos, but I'm sure parts other parts of the Philippines at this time have harvested these mushrooms. Um, they're really nice to the mushroom. Again, good umami, woodsy flavor, but doesn't overtake anything you put it in. So in that in mind, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Better yet, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you can get notifications on every single video, especially if you love my dad's cooking videos. And there's plenty more where that came from, especially when it comes to food, tripping here in the Ilocos while we are quarantined here. And of course, more cooking videos, especially. And with that said, I bid you adieu, I sign off. And remember, Empire Never Ended.